Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1840. The topic is Q&A and the title is Cardio, the Fat Burning Zone. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so I had a client, they sent their initial information, we just started working together, and they were spending an hour a day, four days a week, doing quote-unquote fat burning zone cardio. So the fat burning zone, if you've not heard of that, uh, what it refers to is when you're doing cardio, depending on the intensity that you're doing it, we burn a percentage of body fat versus a percentage of glucose. So I used to teach at the local university, taught for seven and a half years, and one of the classes I taught was exercise physiology, and we would actually do uh, tests to see this, uh, and I would actually show the students and teach this to them. So it was really fun to have this conversation come up recently for me, because that way I could kind of share what I know. But what's interesting is <laughs> uh, the fat burning zone is when the body is burning the greatest percentage of body fat versus glucose when you're doing cardio. So it's the intensity that creates the highest percentage of body fat being burned as fuel. But is that the highest amount? That's where people don't kind of connect the dots. Is they say, okay, it's the highest percentage of body fat being burned, but is that the highest amount of body fat being burned? There's a huge difference between percentage and amount. If you have the same amount of time, say one hour as what this client had, you may spend the whole hour in the fat burning zone, meaning you burned the largest percentage of body fat during that time frame. So compared to glucose and body fat, you burned at at the rate of the highest percentage of body fat being used. But if you spent that whole hour at a full sprint, <laughs> it's impossible, but I want to get the point across. If you spent the full hour at a full sprint, you would be burning a lower percentage of body fat at that high of intensity. But the overall amount of body fat you'd burn would be astronomically greater. So intensity determines the percentage of fat versus glucose being burned. But volume also factors in. We actually burn the highest amount of body fat compared to glucose when we're resting, when we're just sitting. So if you were sitting on your butt, listening to this podcast, you're burning the highest percentage of body fat. <laughs> but if we spent one hour sitting still, even though we'd be burning the highest percentage of body fat, we know that that's not a significant amount of calories, right? So looking purely at percentage of fat burned is obviously incomplete. They have performed a lot of studies, and the consensus is that calories burned matters most. Whether you have 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour, whatever time you're going to devote to cardio, you want to maximize the amount of calories you can burn during that time to maximize your fat loss benefits. This means, depending on your fitness levels, the amount of body stress that's appropriate for your cardio sessions. The greater the intensity is usually better because you can burn more calories in less total time. An example. Let's say somebody's doing cardio only as they're training, and they're actually in pretty good physical condition. Then, to get the most amount of body fat burned off, you would want to do a high intensity and for a moderate time frame. So, I could do a full-on sprint for a minute, but that's not necessarily going to be the maximum amount of time that I can, I can kind of... Uh, use. So I might do a sprint for a minute, then walk for two minutes. Sprint for a minute, walk for two minutes. And maybe I do that for 20 minutes. That would be a very good use of time because in the 20 minutes I would burn significantly more total calories than if I were just to go for a 20 minute walk. So if you can, you want to include intervals. Really high intensity periods of time and then moderate like recovery intensities where you're still moving, but you're allowing aerobic recovery. That interval component within a given time frame is going to help you burn more total calories versus just a steady state within that given time frame. 
Now, if somebody is poor physical condition, they may only be in good enough shape to walk. That's okay. Do it. Walk. Walk is better than sitting. But maybe you can do a brisk walk for 30 seconds, then a, a slower walk for 30 seconds. Brisk walk for 30 seconds, slower walk for 30 seconds. You want to try to maximize your intensity within a time frame before adding more time. So maybe you start with a 20-minute walk rather than going to a 25-minute walk, then a 30-minute walk, then a 35-minute walk. Eventually, you're going to run out of time to be able to spend doing cardio. So stay at the 20 minutes, but do a brisk walk versus a slow walk. Then you try to go even more aggressive with your walking. Maybe you can go to a treadmill and walk at a 10% incline. The idea is to add intensity before you add time. You will run out of time within your schedule. But you can never really run out of intensity, uh, uh, like uh, capacity. Um, I guess like the ability to create intensity. <laughs> you will never run out of the ability to create intensity. So I had a client one time that could run a mile in under four minutes. It was like three minutes and 53 seconds. He was like an, alter, an alternate for the Olympics. Even he could increase his intensity if I said, okay, I want you to run at full speed for a quarter mile. I want you to then match that exact timing for another quarter mile, then try to match that exact timing for another quarter mile, and he wouldn't be able to do it. It would start to fade off. So even somebody who can run under a four-minute mile still has the ability to add intensity if they, if they could. Like the ability to create an increased intensity demand is there, no matter how good a shape you are, even in just four minutes. But we might not always have time. So we'll always be able to progress ourselves in intensity, even if we can't always progress ourselves in time. So if you're looking at cardio-only training and you're in good enough shape, do tons of intervals. If you're not in great shape, then walk, but make sure you try to increase your intensity rather than increase your time as you try to progress in the uh, stimulus. Now, what if you do weight training and cardio? Let's say you do bodybuilding. Maybe you have achieved a much higher than normal body weight kind of body weight. <laughs> That's a weird way of saying that. But like I graduated high school at 165 pounds. I am now 270 pounds and I have a lower body fat percentage. So I've gained over like 100 pounds. I'm a leaner. I am very heavy to my bone frame. I'm very heavy overall. Uh, can I run? Yes. Do I like to run? No. <laughs> I can play a game of basketball still at 270 pounds, but I, I, running is not my favorite. Running feels laborsome. It's it's kind of a, like, I don't know. Like, I'm lucky in the sense I don't have, my knees don't hurt, my back doesn't hurt. Nothing really hurts the day after playing, like, a game of basketball. But I, I realized that if I did that every single day, I probably would start to have a knee pain or a back pain or there'd be some kind of... Uh, degradation <laughs> of recovery. Like somehow I would not fully recover if I were to lift weights as aggressively as I do now, plus try to do running cardio at the body weight that I am at now. So for me, when I do cardio, if I was going to do cardio, I do low impact stuff. Um, you know, if I have a treadmill, maybe I'll do intervals. If I have like an echo bike, um, that's actually something I like to use because you can do lower body then you can do upper body, you can do push upper body, you can do pull upper body, you can do a whole bunch of weird variations of uh, intervals on echo bikes. So when I have access to one of those, uh, I like to do my cardio on that. But I do low impact, meaning my aerobic capacity isn't my problem, it's just that I'm heavy. So if I can reduce the heaviness being an, an, a factor, that helps. So for example, on an elliptical. An elliptical is very low impact. So even if you're heavy, you can do the elliptical and not run into a lot of impact problems versus if you were to try to run down the road. <laughs> You're going to run into a lot of impact problems. So as a bodybuilder, to help not eat into the recovery capacity you have for weight training, you probably want to do low impact and moderate to low intensity cardio. You might just do steady state cardio. Maybe you just walk on a step mill for 20 minutes and get off, and that's absolutely plenty enough. <laughs> you can mix in intervals on a, on a no-impact or low-impact device. Maybe a curved treadmill, you're just doing walking. That's very low impact because your heel strike is, is covered by the curve of the treadmill. So there's a lot of variables, but when you're bodybuilding, you want low impact, moderate intensity, if not actually kind of low intensity. Powerlifting? Very similar. Uh, you might not be heavy in body weight, 
but you cause a lot of body stress in your training. A lot of connective tissue stress, a lot of nervous system stress. So you probably don't want to add in sprints if you also want to be maximally competitive in powerlifting. Now, can people do that? You damn sure bet they can. But their life probably revolves around it. They're they're eating at perfect times, perfect meals. That might be the only damn thing they do all day because they sell themselves on social media and that's their that's their way of making money. So it's it's atypical to find somebody that does really high level powerlifting plus high level sprints plus has a forty hour week job in the chaos of normal life. Typically, if you're doing powerlifting, you may not be heavy. But you're causing a lot of stress in training, therefore your cardio should be low impact and lower stress. Now, regardless of what type of cardio you do, calorie control is important. If you're doing cardio to help lose body fat, you must control your calories. Absolutely, you must control your calories. Otherwise, you don't know the true impact of the cardio. So another client, I am stealing their data, uh, but they gave me their calories and I rounded off to the nearest 100 to make it easier for us to understand, is their calories Monday through Sunday, they had 1,400 calories. Oh, by the way, their range was supposed to be 1,300 to 1,500. So they had 1,400 calories on Monday, 1,100 calories on Tuesday, 1,900 calories on Wednesday, 1,000 calories on Thursday, 1,800 calories on Friday, 2,200 calories on Saturday, 1,400 calories on Sunday. All you need to know is that there was a 1,200 calorie range in there. (laughs) It's a huge range. That's ridiculous. But what's absolutely ridiculous is that this is not abnormal. So many people have such a wide range of calories that they're consuming every day. So, for example, Monday was a great day for her. Tuesday, she got super stressed. She missed a meal. That's why it was down to 1,100. Wednesday, she was stressed, but she was also super hungry because her body was realizing she under ate the day before. So she had one extra, like, couple extra things here and there, blah, 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 and it kind of led to her being 1,900. Then Thursday, she felt like a loser, like she was, like, failing everything in life. So she only ate 1,000 to try to punish herself for eating the 1,900 the day before. Friday, she ate really well during the day, but then went out with friends at night, overate even though she didn't mean to, so she ended up having 1,800 calories. Saturday, they had a family event. She ate during the day, plugged it in at the end of the day, and then said, oh, crap, I over." 8, 2200. Sunday, she then tried to bring it down to try to fix Saturday. So she only ate 1400. So chaotic, everywhere, all over the place. Also, her cardio. She did cardio on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. What happened was on Monday, she had the 1400 calories. She burned, I'm just making up some rough numbers here, about 300 calories in cardio. So that's 1100 calories. Tuesday, she ate 1100. But she didn't do any cardio, so it, was, it netted 1,100. So actually, Monday, even though she was in the right calorie range, she did cardio so much so that it actually equaled to around 1,100 calorie intake, which is under that 13 to 1,500. So she was under on Monday due to the cardio. She was under on Tuesday due to under eating. Then Wednesday, when she felt so freaking hungry, that would be why. She had two days back-to-back being under. So even though she overate, she also still did cardio, so it netted her only at 1,600 calories. Thursday, she felt like bad person from overeating on Wednesday, so she did cardio again. But since she only ate 1,000 calories, the 300 calories burning cardio put her at 700 calories. Way too damn low. Friday and Saturday, she was too busy to do cardio, so she got the full 1,800 calories, the full 2,200 calories. Sunday, she only ate 1,400. She didn't go to the gym, so she just went for a walk, burned about 150 calories, so that's 1,250. So what this means is that we have absolute insane variables. If we look at these days, her target was 1,300 to 1,500 calories, which means fat loss would have happened between 1,300 to 1,500 calories. If we go under 1,300 calories, it actually starts to create negative potential for fat loss because the body starts to downregulate its caloric usage to try to adjust for the underfeeding, and then actually burning body fat becomes harder to do. So on her net calories, whether she did cardio or didn't do cardio, Monday, she missed the window, no fat loss. Tuesday, 
missed it, no fat loss. Wednesday was over it, no fat loss. Thursday was under it, no fat loss. Friday, no. Saturday, no. Sunday, no. So for seven days, she tried to be correct with her food. She tried to fit in cardio when she could to try to correct the issues. But in all seven days, she didn't achieve a single day of fat loss. That's extremely common. That is sadly extremely common. People will bust their butt every damn day, counting numbers, trying to pay attention to the food they're eating, trying to be diligent with what they're doing. But if they don't count their calories, if they don't have caloric consistency, they're missing the mark. Calories must be accounted for and they must be consistent, at least within a range. You don't have to know to the exact number of calories, but within maybe a 200 calorie range, if you're reading some labels, if you're guesstimating throughout the day, we talk about time blocks as one of the best ways to manage uh, calorie control and counting throughout the day. Uh, time blocks you can learn about in podcast 1757. You find that podcast on our website, www.brewlinergym.com. We have a podcast player there. Just scroll down to 1757. What time blocks means is we're just going to break our day into three sections. So the first four to six hours of being awake, you're going to aim for a third of your calories and protein. So maybe you're just looking, okay, can I eat 500 calories in the next four hours or five hours? That's all you have to track. You don't have to track the whole damn day. Just say, okay, am I going to have one meal or two meals? In these one or two meals, make sure I get around 500 calories. Maybe I wanted around 40 grams of protein. If I got that, I'm good. I don't have to count anymore for that time block. I move on to the next time block of the day. You really only have to manage your day one to two meals at a time. That's it. It is so damn easy if we accept and practice the use of time blocks. So easy. Podcast 1757. If calories are accounted for inconsistent, then cardio matters. The type of cardio you do, whether you do the fat burning zone or not, doesn't really matter at all. Total calories burned as needed to match your desired fat loss calorie range is what's most important. If you eat 200 calories above your fat loss range, then you got to do 200 calories worth of cardio today. If you have 20 minutes or you have 60 minutes, you adjust it based on however you want to do those that amount of time to burn 200 calories. That's it. That's how we modify and adjust cardio. Where are my calories going to be at? Where do they need to be? Do I need to do cardio today? How much time do I have to do cardio today? Within the time that I have, what's the intensity that's appropriate for my abilities? Done. It's much more simpler than what people think if we know everything that I just said. <laughs> so now that you do know everything I just said, it's a lot easier than you might think. Is okay, where do my calories need to be? And if you don't know that, you can go to a website, www.brutalironjim.com, free nutrition education. On that page, the first link is create your own nutrition program, and it'll tell you where your calories need to be. Okay? So calories, where they need to be versus what I'm eating. If I'm eating above where I need to be, I need to do something that day to bring my calories down, whether that's weight training or cardio. If I choose to do cardio, how much time do I have to do it in? Do I have 10 minutes? Do I have 60 minutes? Then what is the intensity that matches the time frame I have with the ability that I have to burn the amount of calories I need to burn? Then you just pick that and you do it. Whether it's walking on a step mill for 10 minutes, whether it's going outside for a walk for 20 minutes, whether it's doing sprint intervals on a track for 40 minutes, which I hope you don't have to do. <laughs> but that's how we modify it. So you use whatever is intensity is needed in whatever time frame you have to reach whatever amount of caloric burn you need to reach. That's it. So there is no magical best intensity, you know, this magical fat burning zone to do cardio. That doesn't matter. For some people, that's going to be great on some days. Some people, that's going to be awful on most days. Like That is absolutely not the best scenario for everyone all the time. Use whatever intensity is needed for whatever time frame you have to burn whatever amount of calories you need to burn. Done. Okay, 
If you have any questions, if you need anything, shoot me an email. My email is brutalirongym at gmail.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on our website. Also, if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.